Hello, good evening, and welcome to Mercy Health Wapak Ford Field in Wapak, where tonight on WOSN, we've got a Division 6 regional semifinal between the Versailles Tigers and the Marion Local Flyers. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside John Zerby, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from Wapak. And, John, it's very rare that you get the opportunity to see two reigning state champions play each other in the next year's playoffs, let alone in the in the regional semifinals. Well, and that's that's the Mac for you. You know, they obviously it, uh, they send several teams to the deep into the state tournament run, and and now we have this great opportunity to see two former state champs match up here in this uh, in this regional matchup. So two teams that won state championships this season ago, obviously two very good football teams. Once again, it's time to take a look at our keys to the game, John. And first of all, what stands out for you that Versailles needs to accomplish to grab a victory? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, especially defensively, they have to make tackles. They can't have broken tackles. they they got to make tackles. And um, Marion Local has a ton of good backs, not only their running backs, but mm -hmm. the quarterback as well. So they have to, they definitely have to tackle well. They have to win the turnovers. And, and any time you, you play in a game of this magnitude, any kind of turnover difference is going to be an indicator of, of who's going to come out on top in the scoreboard. And finally, explosive plays. You know, Marion Local has the, probably the best defense we're going to see, you know, all season long here tonight, Garrett. So they have to be able to make a big plays and get down the field and maybe drive the entire length of the field to, to get some scores. And then on the flip side of the matchup, Marion Local, obviously a state power is used to being in these situations. What's their keys to the game? Yeah, I think they have to play well on special teams. I mean, I, I think that, you know, they're solid offensively. They're incredible on defense. So I think that they don't want to they don't want to lack on that third phase of the game. They have to play very well special teams wise. Uh, they got to win first down, both on offense and defense. You know, if they can get good yards on first down, and it puts them in, uh, you know, short yardage situations on offense, but then also it puts the, their uh, defense in a good situation when they can, uh, they can win on first down. And finally, they have to contain Michael Osborne, the uh, all everything uh, from a uh, player from uh, from Versailles. You know, he's going to play quarterback. He's going to play receiver. He's going to run the ball. He's going to serve water to the team. He's going to do everything. Probably clean everybody's cleats too. So they got to contain Michael Osborne. Michael Osborne, nine receiving touchdowns, eight rushing touchdowns, and four passing touchdowns this season in the first team All MAC performer. So those are our keys to the game. We'll step aside here and when we return, we'll have first quarter action. It's the division. Six regional semifinals for sales and Marion local next here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out as we get set for this Division Six Region 24 regional semifinal. A pair of experienced squads in these situations for sales. Their 21st playoff appearance of all time, and Marion local, of course, the 12-time state champion. Uh, here in the state of Ohio for sales. Nine and three coming into tonight's contest. Their head coach Ryan Jones leading them to the state championship a season ago. And Marion Local 12 and 0, the MAC champion this season. And uh, haven't been scored on since the week six matchup against Versailles, which is an awful, <laughs> awful long time ago. As you get a great look there as the snow starting to fall. Uh, once again here on Wapak, and a big credit to uh, the entire Wapakoneta crew hosting this playoff game. They got a snowplow out with a brush on it and brushed the field off. But, uh, they, they believe that the kids deserve the best best facility that they can they can play on tonight, and they, they've been working hard to make sure that that happens here tonight. This is the best facility, I mean, in this area, no doubt, the best. And uh, just looking at the field tonight, I kind of expected to show up and see snow all over the field and thought maybe this would be like, the 1930 Packers and Bears game or something, <laughs> but uh, they did a great job of getting things cleared out, and it looks fantastic. Yeah, we got a couple of squads that would be prepared to play in those <laughs> those sort of uh, <laughs> conditions. Neither one of them is trying to uh, really chuck the pigskin all that often, but it looks like we've got a mix-up of who's supposed to be where. So uh, we'll flip ends of the field here as uh, Versailles is going to receive the opening kickoff. Marion Local. You see the snow falling down here in the Division VI Regional Semifinals. So Marion Local will tee the football up as Carson Bills will kick it away for the Flyers in their visitor in their home standing blue uniforms. Versailles in white. As we get set to kick a matchup between state championship teams a season ago and neither one of them in the division that they won state in last year. Versailles was the D5 state champ, Marion Local the D7 state champ, and here they meet in the D6 regional semis. Looks like even before we get going, Garrett, there's some confusion on the sideline. Coach Goodwin is getting all over the officials. It looks like maybe during the coin toss that 
they felt like they agreed to uh, different sides of the field to kick off and receive, and it looks like they're pretty confused, and I think that's what the holdup is right now. So we're still, I don't know if we got instant replay of what the, <laughs> of, of the coin toss or not. Well, the Flyer faithful not happy, which is not a great way to start a high school football game. Before the clock has started ticking, we're booing. Uh, but hopefully we, we've got, we're going up from here, but uh, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a bit of confusion. Well, that and it looks I, like they're going to get it corrected here. Yeah. Well, essentially I think Versailles won the toss and elected to receive. So Marion local should get to decide which way, <laughs> which way they're kicking. And now we'll, we'll flip it again. So uh, Marion local, believe it or not, was correct <laughs> the way they were lined up before. Yeah. This is say when they came out there, they were, both teams were lined up that way and the officials had them switch. So uh, they got it right. That's the main thing. And I don't know if the wind is blowing the, the American flag in the south end of the stadium is um, it, it's somewhat stiff. So it's you know, there, there is some advantage to playing with the wind in the second and fourth quarter. However, you'd like to play it. Nonetheless, Carson Bills has the football teed up and we are set to kick here in this week 13 playoff matchup. Can you believe, I, I, I was thinking about this earlier, too. like Thanksgiving is two weeks from last <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. Like Ohio State plays Michigan two weeks from today. It's went fast. I have no idea where the football season went. And here we are in the blustery snow as Bills will boot it away and we're underway here between Marion Local and Versailles. Ball bounces at the 15 yard line and scooped up and sprints down the far sideline is the Tiger returner, Peyton Platfoot, returns the football out to the, what is that, the 24-yard line. Well, Garrett, I know you had coined that special kickoff a few weeks back that they just, uh, I don't remember what you said oh, about it, but the sand wedge shot it or the lob sand wedge shot. shot. Yes, so it looks like uh, Marion Local did that, and it worked out well for them because the uh, ball was on the turf, and now they got really good field position. Connor Stonebreaker, the six-foot-eight quarterback, in the shotgun for Versailles. He'll send two wide receivers to each side as Joel Garrett will line up offset to the left behind him. And Garrett will get the carry on the first play of the game out to the 28-yard line, a gain of four on first down for the junior running back. Yeah, and I think if you're Versailles, you have to immediately try to attack Marion Local. I don't, I don't think you can take the mindset that, you know, we're going to try to run around them or avoid certain things because that's just you will not beat Marion Local this way. The only way that you can beat them is playing their game, is being out physical and winning the line of scrimmage. So it's uh, it's interesting to see them go right at them. Second and six here for the Tigers as they'll line back up in a shotgun. And we mentioned in the pregame show, they'll line up Michael Osborne, number 17, in the middle, the slot receiver to the bottom of your screen wherever they need to as Garrett had a hole for just a brief moment. Aiden Eifert trips him up from behind. It's still a gain of two on the play, but a wide hole there for Joel Garrett to run through. Yeah, and Joel Garrett's had an outstanding season. He led the MAC with over 1,300 yards rushing, and you're right, he had a just one a little foot there, pick it up off the ground. It would have been a nice game, but now it's third and short. So third and four for the Tigers. He'll try to bark out and get that Marion local defense to jump off sides. Unsuccessful. The clock continuing to tick with 10.45 to go. So they'll now bunch the receivers in tight on the formation. Flyers show blitz. They'll bring one. Pass is thrown. It's caught by A.J. Griesjord, and that is good for a Betty's Natural Foods first down. Yeah, that was a really, really good play call and a nice route uh, there by Griesjord. And uh, Connor Stonebreaker did a really good job of throwing that out route, putting it right where it needed to be, and then not only did he get the catch, but then he you know, did just enough to get the first down as well. It's a great look at the Holman's Insurance uh, replay there as Nate Busher makes the stop immediately after the ball was caught, but it was one yard past the down to gain, and now the Tigers will line up in the eye formation. Tight end to the left of the formation. No, excuse me, tight end to the right of the formation. As Kate or Ethan Stover lines up as the tight end. And Stonebreaker will look to throw, stands in the pocket and going deep. And he's looking for Grease Dorn and a pass interference penalty going to be called against the Marion local Flyers. Yeah, that's a that's a tough call only because uh, uh, Nate Busher had really good coverage and uh, I don't think the ball was really I, it was catchable. It just wasn't where it needed to be, and uh, the receiver was turned around and um, but Nate Busher was there and, and got kind of tangled up and. 
uh, Versailles, uh, you know, kind of lucky break there to get the, um, the the penalty. He did as the penalty flag came in immediately. You see there on the Holman's insurance replay. And it looked so, like it was Carter Jones there. Excuse me. He no, got tied up. So first and ten as Versailles gets right to Marion local territory at the midfield stripe. So a, a pretty good first drive here for Versailles being put together. Hey, two first downs. I mean, this is this is a big accomplishment against a Marion local defense, that's for sure. Stonebreaker in a gun once again. Garrett to his left. Titus Garrett, senior, lined up as the wing. The 6'8 Stonebreaker, back to pass. Has time to throw. It's going deep for Osborne behind the Marion local D. He's got it at the 20-yard line and is inside the Knee Camp Farm Market red zone. That's a big pitch and catch to Michael Osborne, the first team all Mac performer, got behind the Marion local D. Well, and they've taken two shots downfield now, and they're not afraid to throw the ball here in the snow and the wind. And, you know, one of the things Marion local was concerned about was Michael Osborne. He's made a big, huge play here early in the game. So the Tigers at the 14 yard line. Joel Garrett gets the carry. Pitch, and he is brought down from behind. Jake Top, the defensive end for Marion Local, brings down Garrett. You know, both these teams kind of base out of a spread set, but they both will, you'll see them in I formations and double tight ends and all that. And, you know, on a night like tonight, I wouldn't say the weather is, is terrible, but it's not good either. I mean, it's kind of a wet, snowy, blowy kind of right, it's cold. You know, atmosphere. And it's cold, you're right. And, and we're not used to cold. I mean, I was mowing Wednesday night, Garrett. So it's <laughs> we're not used to the cold. So for them to be able to get under center and run some traditional under center stuff for both teams is going to be an advantage. Garrett, the deep set back, takes a carry once again, and he is met immediately. A play by Darren Meyer, the two-time Midwest Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year meets Garrett in the hole and makes the stop for the Flyers. Yeah, if you want to watch great defense, watch Darren Meyer. I mean, he just plays with relentless pursuit, and he's always around the ball. He just has a nose for the football, and even if he doesn't make the tackle, he's he's where the ball carrier is. So a third and five upcoming here for the Tigers. They do have room to pick up a first down here inside the Camp Farm Market red zone. Stonebreaker in the gun, Titus Garrett. The running back beside Stonebreaker with three wide receivers to the left of your screen. Stonebreaker turns, fires, looking for Osborne, and the pass is deflected. Not sure who the flyer was that got his hands on that. Interesting thing here is, um, you know, we'll see it on the replay, but Marion Local goes cover zero, and they bring six. And so Versailles combats that by running a rub route, but uh, Marion Local did a great job of of making sure that they had a, a, a defensive back there to, to help and support and was able to get a big stop. And now we're going to see a, the first field goal attempt of the game. Joel Garrett on to kick the field goal. Tigers were three of six on the season at field goal tries. Snap to Stonebreaker is back. The kick is up. And the kick is through the uprights and good. Silver so Sales scores the first points of the season against Marion Local. They had been unscored upon in the first quarter, and the Tigers get on the board first with a field goal here on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Minster Bank, supporting the youth in our communities. For sales with a 3-0 lead over Marion Local, it's the first time somebody scored upon Marion Local since the 27-7 victory for the Flyers over the Tigers back in week six. And like we said before we went to commercial break, it's the first time anybody has scored on Marion Local in the first quarter. This is the first time in 2022 that they have trailed. So are we safe to say they haven't, yeah, they, they haven't even been down this year. I mean, it's this incredible statistic. Flyers return it back out. Drew Laus splits the D out to the 50-yard line, crosses the midfield stripe. A big return for the sophomore running back. Well, they don't like being down, that's for sure. <laughs> you can see immediately they, they rebound here and, and get back into it. But I know that Coach uh, Goodwin really talked about special teams and how special teams can get them back in this game and be that, that important uh, third phase of the ball game. And, and what a great return by Marion Local. And really nothing fancy there from Drew Laus. Just runs straight up the field and gets it into Versailles territory. So with the ball spotted at the 48-yard line, great starting field position for the first drive for the Flyers. Tate Hess will line up as the quarterback. A six foot two, 165 pound senior is a running threat as much as he is a throwing threat as they'll hand off to Kyle or Darren Meyer, excuse me. Meyer, the carry, out to the 44 yard line, a gain of four on the first down carry for the senior running back. 
Yeah, you'll see both these guys. Uh, Darren Meyer, Kyle Audi, they'll just they'll just really carry the load of this offense. And then, you know, what else I like to see is the senior quarterback, Tate Hess. He also will carry, you know, some of that load as well. He's done a great job of just managing the offense. He's got four rushing touchdowns this year. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see the all, the all kinds of different options that the Flyers bring. Meyer to the right of Hess in the gun. And Hess will turn and fire that one out to Kyle Audi. He'll make the reception. Cut down at the 40-yard line. Tackle made by number 57 for Versailles. That's Dominic Bargy. Yeah, and that gives uh, you know a third and short here for Marion Local, and you know they're past the 50. I, I'm you know they're going to be aggressive in a game like this, especially with the wind of their backs. You know, uh, it wouldn't be surprised to. You know, see them come right at Versailles. Dominic, or excuse me, the ball handed off to Darren Meyer, and they're going to say he did pick up the Betty's Natural Foods first down. Well, that was a that was a great play by defensive tackle Jared Lyons for Versailles. I kind of thought he was pushed back, but he must have had just enough with the you know going forward and getting the first down. But uh, it was a nice uh, stop by Versailles, but. A, a great answer to uh, Marion Local to come out here, get a great return on the kickoff, and then their first first down. So the Flyers move the chains with that Betty's Natural Foods first down as Hess will line up the gun once again. Meyer to his left, Laus in motion. He'll cut it inside, and a Tiger defender hangs on for dear life there for just a hot moment there as, as Braden Henry I always hangs liked on that. there. I always like the creativity of the uh, Marion local offense. They they just do some things differently than than what a lot of other teams do. And uh, that time they pulled their tackle, you know, on on that play. And you know, typically you'll see guards pull, and, and uh, but you know, I love to see uh, uh, tackles and centers get out there and pull as well. Second and five upcoming here for the Flyers in the I formation. As Kyle Audi lines up as the deep back. Hess will run the option and keep it himself. He's got the Betty's Natural Foods and more, first down and more, and he'll get very close to the Knee Camp Farm Market red zone. Might have got in the red zone there. Tate Hess, you know, we talked about him just a few minutes ago about how, you know, he he typically is that guy who's you know, not called upon to run, but he just made a great play there, and they run a little option you can see here, and uh, it's an option between uh, him and uh, Kyle Otte and kept it himself and picked up nice yardage. We have an injured Tiger on the field that the, their medical staff is attending to as you see the Holman's Insurance replay there. We'll snap aside first quarter action coming up here on WOSN. First downs tonight brought to you by Betty's Natural Foods. They're your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. Flyers picking up a pair of Betty's Natural Foods first downs here as they have got the football right at the 20-yard line. So they're on the edge of the E-Camp Farm Market red zone here with 5.25 to go here in this first quarter. Kyle Otte lined up as the quarterback now with Darren Meyer to his left in the Wildcat formation. And he'll keep it himself off left tackle. He has room to run. Kyle Otte inside the 10. Kyle Otte to the pylon. Kyle Otte from 20 yards out. And they'll say he is spotted down inside the one. And now they'll say he's got the touchdown. Kyle Otte from 20 yards out gives Marion Local their first touchdown here of this evening. It's a big answer to that Versailles field goal, but running that Wildcat formation, you know, it's uh, we've seen a little bit of that last night uh, with uh, Hamilton Baden, and now you see Kyle Otte do it. and uh, Really just some, some great blocking up front, guys pulling. Uh, also, Darren Meyer getting out there and lead blocking for him, and Kyle Otte did just a great job of shifting and getting himself in the end zone. and. Uh, just slipping in right there at the end. Carson Bills on to kick the extra point. Snap down to hold is down. A kick is up, and a kick is good. Marion Local leading Versailles 7-3 after the 20-yard touchdown run by Kyle Otte here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Knee Camp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 127, eight miles south of Salina. And both squads finding themselves on the Knee Camp Farm Market Red zone tonight, and both squads on the scoreboard here as Marion Local leads 7 at nothing over Versailles here in this regional semifinal. And, John, we see a five-play, 48-yard touchdown drive for the Flyers that is a answer to an eight-play, 
76-yard touch or a field goal drive by Versailles. So both squads feeling each other out here in the early going. Yeah, I'll tell you, this is this is just going to be a fun matchup tonight because these two teams, they're just so well coached, so disciplined. And just both teams, they, they do a lot of different things offensively. They're both dynamic. They both have solid defenses. And, you know, besides the one penalty, which is a pass interference penalty, I'll, I don't think you'll see a, many penalties tonight either. It's just this it's going to be that kind of game. And they know each other well. They've played and they matched up, you know, earlier in the season. And, you know, I know that we're all in for a treat tonight to watch this game. So Carson Bills has the football team up for Marion Local. He'll boot it away once again as they'll send it deep. And a ball will be returned by Peyton Platfoot. Out to the 15, a 20-yard line. He's brought down in the open field. Yeah, and I'd say right now, you know, special teams-wise, Marion Locals had the advantage. I mean, they've done a great job on their kickoff coverage uh, and the two kickoffs they had, and then their one kickoff return. Um, big yardage. Now, there is a flag down on the field. I'm not sure if that was just the dropped flag or a – Coach Coach Goodwin wants to know what's that flag all about. I'm not sure the officials know. Yeah, I don't know if the back judge just now saw that he didn't have a flag in his pocket, so he'll scoop it up. If I'm yes. Coach Goodwin, I don't say a word. Then he can't throw the flag. <laughs> can't, you know? can't throw what he doesn't have. It's the ball spotted at the 21-yard line. Mitchell Ranley, by the way, the tackle for Marion Local on the kickoff return. So Stonebreaker goes back to work. In the shotgun, Connor Stonebreaker, the six foot eight senior, going to play college basketball at Hillsdale College, a Division II school up in southern Michigan. Straight up 127 from Versailles. And Stonebreaker will hand it off to Joel Garrett. Joel Garrett, a little bit of room to run before he's met right in the hole. Landon Arling brings Garrett to the turf on first down. Yeah, Landon Arling played that really well. He, he scraped uh, right where he needed to be, and he filled the hole, filled the gap, and you can see him here. It's a really, really nice uh, run by Garrett, but uh, Arlen did a great job making that form tackle and then allowing his buddies to run and help him out. Flyers play three, or excuse me, four linebackers in their defensive formation, and three of them were first-team All-Midwest Athletic Conference performers. Actually, six Marion Local Flyers were first-team All-Mac this year Well, on the defensive side. You can see why. I mean, like I said earlier, I, I don't think there's any – better defense in the state of Ohio, let alone Division VI. Three wide receivers, two Stonebreakers right. He'll turn and fire that way, caught by Platfoot at the 31-yard line. A whole host of Flyers are there to try to cut him down. As Drew Seitz, the initial stop for Marion Local, but that will move the chains for another Betty's Natural Foods first down. You know, I think Versailles is doing a really good job of mixing things up. They're they're not afraid to run the ball. They're not afraid to throw the short passes. Uh, Stonebreaker does just a great job of, of, of you know, rifling that ball, and uh, Peyton Flatfoot did a great job of catching it and then getting yards, and they're not afraid to throw the ball deep, too. So, you know, as much as possible, they've kept uh, Marion Local on, on their toes. Titus Garrett, the first back through the formation. Actually, that is number 42, James Schmidtmeyer, with the run at four, Mar four Versailles, and he's got about an eight-yard gain on first down. Yeah, you know, these are not option teams, Garrett. These are, you know, when you think of option teams, you think of Navy and Army and all those kinds of things. But, you know, we've seen Marion Local run a, a two-man option, you know, in the last series, but that was a midline option, which is basically they're running the fullback right up the gut and not blocking the defensive tackle. And he made a really nice gain there on first down. So second and two here for the Tigers. Looking to pick up another Patty's Natural Foods first down. Stonebreaker has two wide receivers split out wide to each side. He'll now look to the left and fire across the field to Osborne. Osborne caught the football, broke a tackle, and is at the midfield stripe before he's shoved out of bounds by Nate Busher. But a great show of athleticism there by Michael Osborne to break out of a couple of sure tackles for the Flyers. Yeah, Michael Osborne, I mean, we, we've we covered him before this year, and just his name is all over the place. But when he gets the ball, it's, it's like electric. I mean, he gets out there and he does – some incredible things. You can see him here break two tackles, and here's the third tackle missed, and picking up great yards and another first down for the Tigers. That's a big Betty's Natural Food first down that you see there on that Holman's Insurance replay. As the Tigers go back to work in the I formation, Joel Garrett, the deep set back. The 5'10 junior will take the handoff. Has a little bit of room to run. Arling hanging on for just a little bit. Drew Seitz as well helps bring Garrett to the turf, but that's another nice gain there on first down out of running the football for Versailles. I'm really impressed with this right side of Versailles' offensive line. Uh, Dominic Bargy and 
Zach uh, Cardonier just doing a great job of getting their base blocks and, and staying on them, just giving Garrett enough time to, to slip through the hole and get uh, really positive yards. So that was a six-yard carry there for Joel Garrett. As for sales now, quite content to run a little bit of clock here as the play clock down to 10 seconds. They'll get set, Stonebreaker in the gun. He'll fake the pitch and keep it himself up the middle of the field. Stonebreaker has the Betty's Natural Foods first down, down at about the 30-yard line. Well, and that's that's something about their offense you don't see much. I mean, when they bring Michael Osborne in to play quarterback, he, he's really dynamic and they'll run the ball. But, you know, Connor Stonebreaker can run himself, all six foot eight of him. You know, we talked about him going to play basketball in college, but what a nice runner, you know, uh, and especially when they need him to run. He's got two rushing touchdowns this year already, but uh, that was a nice pickup and another first down. So the ball spotted at the 30-yard line as we approach two minutes to go on the Structure Outdoor Ohio by all scoreboard here in the first quarter, and the Tigers driving first and 10 from that 30-yard line. A pair of backs in the backfield with Stonebreaker in the gun. He'll drop back to pass. Look, fires over the middle of the field. He threw it right to a flyer. It's intercepted by Nate Busher. He's returning it back the other way. Brought out to the 21-yard line as Jared Lyons makes the tackle for Versailles. But well, that's a big play by that Marion local D. Yeah, and, and you know, Coach uh, Jones had talked about the turnovers and making sure they win the turnover battle. And uh, hey, what a great job by the Marion local defense to step up here. And, and I think Connor Stonebreaker got a little too aggressive. He's actually double covered. He had a receiver open on the hitch route underneath uh, down here on the on the, the Marion local sideline, but he decided to go up top on the post route, and it was double covered and threw right into coverage and a big play for the Flyers. That makes Marion local now a whopping plus 25 in the takeaway battle that you see. Uh, just a, a fantastic job from their defense to force turnover after turnover. As they'll turn and pitch to Adi. Adi fumbled a football, and it's going to be scooped up by the Mar by the Versailles defense as Colton Groff pounces on it. The team's trade turnovers in Versailles has excellent field position. Well, it's like they just completed that pass just a minute ago. I mean, you know, we, we seen this in a game last evening where there was an interception and then immediately there was a fumble afterwards. And what a big uh, play for uh, the Tigers there. Um, you know, getting that, that big break of, of, of getting the fumble and then getting great field position as well. And now they're really sitting pretty here for uh, in, in the red zone almost. You know what? Great heads-up play by Colton Groff, not to try to scoop and score. and it, it, He just fell on the football and said, I want to make sure we get the ball at the 24-yard line and did so. So Connor Stonebreaker will be back in the gun. Schwederman joins – or Schmidtmeyer, excuse me. James Schmidtmeyer joins him in the backfield. Three wide receivers split out wide to the top of your screen, and Stonebreaker will roll that way. He'll turn and fire. Caught by Joel Garrett. Tried to slip a tackle. Couldn't. A sure tackle made there by Ryan Holman from his safety spot for Marion Local. But it is positive yards on first down once again for Versailles. Yeah, they, they've really done a good job on first down of getting these big chunks and putting themselves in great position on, on second and third down to get first downs. And it's why they're in, you know, I wouldn't say they're in the driver's seat right now, but they're they're really aggressively coming at Marion Local and, and staying in a, in a close uh, matchup so far. So the ball at the 19-yard line, that puts Versailles in the Neat Camp Farm Market red zone for the second time here in this first quarter. They'll come back out in the gun once again. Stonebreaker with Garrett to his right. Bunch wide receivers to his right. Michael Osborne streaking across the middle of your screen. They're going deep, looking for Platfoot. Can't corral it. Gave a valiant effort, but Nate Busher there to break up the pass. That's a great defensive play and a great effort there by Platfoot to try to catch that football. Yeah, and I and I like the no call. I really do because that that's just kind of a – that's just an athletic play by Nate Busher. I mean, he gets up there and he gets his body turned. There's not contact, and he's he's trying to get his head turned around. He maybe didn't get that, but that's okay. I mean, it's just a great uh, – both guys going for the ball, great defensive play by Nate Busher. So third and five from the 19-yard line. Got to get to just past the 15-yard line between the 15 and the 14 if they'll go back to the I formation. Garrett, the deep back once again. And they'll turn and pitch to him. Joel Garrett, room to run. Joel Garrett met. He's got the Betty's Natural Foods first down, and it's going to be first and 10 from the 11. So they're going to have a couple of cracks at it here from just outside the 10-yard line. Yeah, but it looks like they maybe threw a flag, and maybe there's a holding. It is going to be holding. And unfortunately, you know, they've, they've – you know, been able to, to play this game pretty uh, pretty clear of any penalties, but now that that's going to really hurt, especially a, a big third down, first down that they would have had. Yeah, especially you convert that first down, and now it's going to be third and long. That's a tough penalty and a tough situation here for the Tigers with the ball now spotted at the 27-yard line. 
and it's probably, you know, the, the fans watching right now probably can't see it on TV, but we can see it. looks to me like the, the snow is picked yeah, up, the wind is picked up. Yeah, see that shot right there. I mean, it, yeah, there it is. I mean, it is really the, the, the conditions down there are getting more and more treacherous. So it'll be third and 12 now. Clock is ticking. If the Tigers want the wind at their back, they'll, they'll now call timeout. Here's the play clock running out. 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. We'll step aside here on WOSN. Replays tonight brought to you by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Third and 12 here for the Tigers after the, the holding penalty. It's Joel Garrett in motion. Connor Stonebreaker awaits the snap. Now looks to his right. They'll throw a tunnel screen to Griesdorn. He's got blockers in front of him. Griesdorn is going to be very close to the first down. Did he get the Betty's Natural Foods first down? He did. Well, just a perfect call. Once again, Marion Local in that third down situation, playing cover zero, bringing six guys, and now you go three on three with the tunnel screen, like you said, and you see there's blockers, uh, different guys out there. Uh, Lucas Stammen out there getting blocks and uh, doing a great job of uh, propelling uh, Griesdorn to get that nice, that huge first down. So that'll do it for the first quarter of play. Versailles will come back with first and 10 from inside the Kneecamp Farm Market Red Zone when we return with second quarter action here on WOSN. Tonight's Marion local premier sponsor is OPAC and Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. You see the wind and the snow just a whipping here at Wapakoneta High School. You know, Garrett, I, I did check my phone on the free weather app that I have, and, uh, you know, the the snow is supposed to start in 15 minutes, according to my <laughs> app. So <laughs> you get what you pay for, I guess. As the Tigers have first and 10 from the 14-yard line inside the Necamp Far Market Red Zone, they'll turn and pitch to Joel Garrett. He'll patiently survey the defense, is able to slip past one tackle, but isn't able to get past two. As Jake Top brings him down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of about a yard or so. Yeah, you got to give it, you know, credit to Nick Ranley there. He did a great job of uh, pursuing here. And he didn't make the tackle, but he did. It was the first contact there and uh, went ahead and uh, broke a tackle, but really strung it out and allowed the, the Marion local defenders to, to string it out and make the big play. So second and 11 here. And so you can see there that the Tigers can pick up a first down after the team's traded turnovers at the final stages there of the first quarter. Versailles got the ball at their own 24-yard line, or at the Marion local 24-yard line. Stonebreaker fires, caught momentarily by Greensdorn, dropped the football inside the five-yard line. It's an incomplete pass. Yeah, and I, I, Greensdorn had a, he was open, and uh, Stonebreaker did a really good job of putting the ball on the money, and uh, I, I think the, the big thing, though, is that Marion local closed in quickly. Great job. Uh, by both uh, Landon Arling and uh, Tate Hess to come in and knock that ball loose. And, and now it puts them in a third, and, and I guess it's not long, but third and 11, it's a kind of a big situation here, cl this close to the end zone. Yeah, third and 11 upcoming. Have to get down to the three-yard line. Do the Tigers. Stonebreaker, who's had plenty of time to throw the football tonight when they've dropped back to pass, will look to do so again. Fires and it's batted down right at the line of scrimmage. Drew Seitz got his mitts on the football. That's a big play from that Marion local D. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, sometimes you, as a defensive lineman, you're wanting those sacks, you're wanting those big plays. But when you knock a ball down like that, that's, that's just huge momentum shift. And that is as good as a play as a sack, uh, especially in a third down, a big third down situation. So the Tigers will trot out their field goal unit once again, this time with the wind at their back. It's Joel Garrett made the field goal the last time out. I forgot to forgot to mark down how long the field goal was. But he's already got one tallied here tonight, looking to make it a 7-6 ball game. Snap back to Stonebreaker. The hold down, the kick is up. And a kick has enough leg, but it is wide. Joel Garrett missed it to the right. And unfortunately for the Tigers, they're not able to capitalize on that Marion local turnover. We'll step aside, 7-3 the score. Just over 11 minutes to go here in the first half on WOSN. 
Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Flyers hand the football off to Lousy, or Louse, excuse me. Or no, it's Darren Meyer. Meyer gets the handoff, and he's got a big rumble out near the midfield stripe. It's good for a Betty's Natural Foods first down. Yeah, it's the first time we've seen them in the eye formation, and they were in just the fullback trap. Right away, got up to the line quick and snapped it quickly, and a nice big gain, uh, especially a, a little bit of a momentum shift uh, as uh, Marion Local or, uh, or Versailles was driving and then missed that field goal. A nice first down gain for the Flyers. So a big rumble there by Darren Meyer, who has 22 rushing touchdowns on the season as the Flyers line up. Once again, Hess will roll to the near sideline, and now will tuck it and try to keep it himself for a couple of yards. He is hit and brought to the turf by Dominic Bargy. Yeah, great decision by Hess because he is just a two-receiver route into the boundary on the short side of the field, and uh, Versailles is in a zone coverage, and uh, it could have been dangerous to go ahead and throw the ball, and he made a decision really quickly that he was going to put his head down and get some yards, and, and that's just a real smart play by senior Tate Hess. So a gain of two, puts the ball at the 45-yard line, brings up second and eight with ten minutes to go here in the second quarter. Hess will send Laos in motion. They'll pitch it to Laos, and he'll run up ahead to the 49-yard line, still shy of the midfield stripe, a gain of five there for the sophomore. Yeah, they like to get him involved. I mean, and they look at him as, as possibly someone who would have replaced Darren Meyer in the backfield next year, and then try to get him, uh, you know, at six foot, 180 pounds as a sophomore, they try to get him the ball on those little jet sweeps, and uh, does a nice job the second time he's carried the ball tonight. Third and four. Upcoming here for the Flyers as Adi lines up his quarterback once again at a timeout called by Versailles. The last time Marion Local lined up in that formation, it was a 20-yard touchdown run there for Kyle Adi. So we'll step aside and see what the Flyers draw up when we return. 7-3, Marion Local leads Versailles on WOSN. Replays tonight brought to you by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Hand off to Darren Meyer, sprints ahead for the Betty's Natural Foods, first down on third and four. Just put his head down and got what he needed to get. Yeah, Darren Meyer's fun to watch run the ball. I mean, get it, you know, getting him the ball, great blocking up front, but watching him run people over and break tackles and put his head down and get yards. Uh, just a old school kind of runner here, falling forward, moving forward. Great run by Darren Meyer. So that moves the chains there. You see a great look at it at the Lomans Insurance replay as Kyle Adi will line up at quarterback once again. He'll move Meyer offset to the left, and Meyer will be the lead blocker for Adi as he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Great play, Jared Lyons combining with Braden Henry for the stop there for Versailles. Yeah, Braden Henry's been one that, you know, to keep an eye on. He's only a 5'11 sophomore. And I know he's had a really good season, but Jared Lyons is one that I've, I've really been impressed with this year. Six foot, 215 pound senior. He's got three sacks and made a great read and got off box and a nice play. So a loss of one there for the Flyers brings up second and 11 as they'll go back to the I formation. As Adi will line up as the deep back. They'll run the option once again. Hess looks like he's going to keep it himself. Hess with blockers inside the 30 yard line before he's picked up and slammed to the turf. Peyton Platfoot makes the tackle, but, but not before. A big rumble there for Tate Hess. I didn't expect Tate Hess to, to get the carries and have the impact that he's had tonight, but I like it here. Watch him put his hand on the back of Darren Meyer, kind of saying, Hey, get a block for me, buddy. And then he puts his head down and falls forward and makes a really good play. Michael Osborne actually the tackle for Versailles. I said Peyton Flatfoot, but Michael Osborne slams Hess to the turf there as they'll run the trap up the middle. Meyer, and he's picked up and slammed to the ground. Yeah, that first time they ran the trap just a, a few plays ago, they, they popped it for, a, a, for you know, a nice uh, run, but that time Jared Lyons was there. and you know uh, really He's really tough to, to trap block and does a great job of kind of stuffing that. Uh, getting low and, and making a pile. Zach Cordonier, the stop for the Tigers. So a gain of just one there after the big rumble on the trap the last time for Darren Meyer. That one goes for just over a yard. Bunch formation to the right. Bunch receivers to the right as they'll hand off once again, and Meyer is hit in the backfield once again. Dominic Bargy from his defensive tackle spot makes the tackle for loss. That's another big play there for the 6'3", 225-pound junior. He's right there immediately ready to meet Darren Meyer. You know, Dominic Bargies, we, we've said his name a few times tonight. He's been active on that defensive line, and we're seeing how aggressive and how well coached this for sales defensive line is. And, you know, uh, what a great job by Bargie to come down and make a big play 
and that puts Marion Local into really a tight spot here on third and long. Yeah, it's one of the first times we've seen the Flyers be faced in this situation, and we'll see what they pull out of the playbook. As Tate Hess lines up in a shotgun with Meyer to his left, Kyle Otte will line up as the wide receiver at the bottom of your screen, and a timeout called by Marion Local before this big third and 11 play as the Flyers lead 7-3 here in the second quarter on WOSN. Betty's Natural Foods is your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. They're our first down sponsor. And Marion Local looking to secure a Betty's Natural Foods first down here, but they've got to convert a third and 11 just on the outskirts of the Neat Camp Farm Market red zone. So the ball spotted at the 30-yard line. Got to get down to the 19. And really the first time, John, that Marion Local's been in this spot. You know, and they, they moved the ball pretty pretty well, but it's like Versailles just always kind of punches back when it's most important. Kyle Adi, the man in motion for the Flyers, as he'll flash across the formation as Hess looks to throw, pressured, has to sprint out of the pocket, but Hess into the open field, and he's cut down just shy of the first down marker. A big tackle made by Ethan Stover in the open field is going to bring up fourth and relatively short here for Marion Local. Yeah, Ethan Stover did a, just a great job of saving that first down, and you can see you know, Tate Hess did a good job of avoiding that pressure. Uh, uh, Blitz was on and had pressure, and he did a great job of moving out of the pocket, but Ethan Stover comes in and, and just makes a really great play. Now you're going to see Marion Local go for it here on fourth down in the snow and the wind and the, and the trenches here. Flyers like the toss sweep out of the, the short yardage situations on fourth and two, and they'll send a man in motion, and they'll toss it to Laos or Kyle Otte, excuse me, and Kyle Otte's got the Betty's natural food first down. That's a good call on your part, Garrett, but I like the formation because uh, they're in the I formation with the wing, but they actually motion Meyer. Typically, he's at the uh, fullback position, so they put him in the uh, in the wingback position, and not only were the fullback and the tailback blocking, but there you see the quarterback blocking as well. Peyton Platt, Plattfoot, the tackle for for sales. Nonetheless, the Flyers move deep into the knee camp farm market red zone. It's got a stoppage in play, yeah, officials timeout. And apparently whatever the problem was has been resolved as they'll start the clock and get Marion Local back on top of the football. I think they were just trying to set the chains. It looked like they maybe had started the clock and then stopped it and got the chains set now. Hess in the gun, Laos in motion. He'll hand off back the other way to Darren Meyer. Meyer with some blockers inside the 10. Still on his feet, rolls to the five-yard line. That's another big rumble there for Darren Meyer and a Betty's Natural Foods first down. Yeah, Darren Meyer, you know, I feel like when they need that big play, Darren Meyer's there to make it. And, uh, you know, they, they run a little uh, crossbuck action there, and then uh, you can see a great block there uh, by uh, 59, uh, Kyle, or excuse me, 68, Shane Fleck. Uh, did a great job of getting a, a, a reach block there and, and springing Darren Meyer. So the Flyers inside the Decamp Farm Market red zone. Kyle out of the deep back. They'll hand off to Meyer up the gut. Inside the five-yard line. Didn't get close to the goal line. It'll be second and goal here for the Flyers. Yeah, and now you're in a situation where you've got a, you a four-point lead, but... If you can punch it in here with, with about five minutes to go in the second quarter, that would be a real, uh, a, I guess, a huge advantage going into halftime or even, you know, getting out in front 14-3 for the Flyers. First in goal for Marion Local with under five minutes to go here in the half. They'll send a man in motion. Adi, hand off to Meyer. Meyer brought down to the backfield once again. Dominic Bargy again, a big play for Versailles on that front defensive line. Yeah, Dominic Bargy did a great job of getting across there and got to, you know, got to give some shout out to Mitchell Bay too. He gets in there and does a great job of staying low and he's only 5'8", 165, but staying low and making a big play. And every time you just think Marion Local is going to make it easy and go score, here's Versailles uh, really pushing back. Second and goal after the two yard loss from the six yard line. Meyer, the deep back. And Meyer gets the handoff, and Darren Meyer is upended just shy of the goal line. A touchdown saving tackle made by Schmidt Meyer is going to bring up third and goal from the one yard line. Yeah, I like this counter action here, and uh, Meyer's getting ready to slip in and get you know get in the get in there for the touchdown. And what a nice job by Versailles there, uh, Ethan Stover getting his head down and making a big play. But this is this is third and one here, Garrett. Third and goal, I should say. But it's really a one one yard. On the one-yard line. 15th play of the drive upcoming. Adi in motion. 
They'll hand off to Meyer, and Meyer goes in for his 23rd touchdown run of the season. Darren Meyer from one yard out extends the Marion local lead to 13-3. And that was just a throwback series there, uh, drive. Just, you know, them under center, pounding the ball, getting the ball to Meyer, Adi, Tate Hess, some, you know, rotating different guys. Laos getting a carry as well. And uh, that just a beautiful drive put together by Marion Local. Not only that, but taking lots of time off the clock now with only about three uh, minutes and 30 some seconds to, to go here in the second quarter. Carson Bills on to kick the extra point for Marion Local. Snap back, kick is up, and the kick is through the uprights and good, and Marion Local leads for sales 14-3 on the Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt Scoreboard here on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Minster Bank, supporting the youth in our community. Marion Local caps off a 15-play, 80-yard touchdown drive where they technically ran the ball 14 times and threw it once, but the one pass was the little push pass jet sweep action to Drew Laus. So really they ran the ball 15 times, 15 consecutive times for well, 80 yards and cap it off with a touchdown. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm sure they'd like to be a little bit more balanced, but with the conditions, with the weather, with the, with the wet snow, um, this is the, the safe thing to do, and they're doing it so well. I mean, they're a running team, and, you know, they, that's the first thing they want to do in every game. They want to establish their running game, and you can start to see the snow starting well, to collect a little I was bit on say, the field the, as well. The, the, the turf is a markedly different color now than it was when we started tonight's ball game, and you can see the tracks on where guys have uh, trotted out there. You see just a straight line across the field there at the uh, – the, 35-yard uh, line where Marion Locals players have uh, lined up for the for the kickoff here. Just the just the sport itself. You start in 90 degrees and then you you know we're not even we're not even halfway through the right. playoffs and we're playing in snow. So Michael Osborne has the kickoff return. Osborne out of the open field. Osborne near the midfield stripe is brought down, but a big return for Michael Osborne, the junior first team All Mac performer, as Mer Versailles with some pretty great field position. Well, you'll see on this replay here, Garrett, but Michael Osborne, there's just like another, he's got another gear that, that other guys don't have. And when he touches the ball, I said it earlier, he's electric. He just, he makes things happen. And, you know, I think that's part of the reason why they try to play him at quarterback is so he can get touches. But uh, uh, they're going to need to get him a little bit more involved offensively to get some scores. Stonebreaker lines up at quarterback with Joel Garrett behind or beside him, offset to the left. 3.30 to go in this first quarter. They'll hand off to Garrett. He'll power up to the 50-yard line before he's picked up and slammed to the turf by Aiden Eifert. Yeah, Aiden Eifert did it. just a great job of uh, doing his job, playing that outside linebacker position and uh, containing and stepping up and making a really nice play and um, uh, really uh, limiting Versailles to getting any yards on first down. Get a great look at it on the Holman's Insurance replay here on after the gain of two by Garrett. It'll bring up second and eight. Three minutes to go on the Structure Outdoor Ohio by on scoreboard here in the first half. Tigers trailing by 11, 14 to three. A Stonebreaker will line back up in the shotgun with the Garrett brothers to his left. Stonebreaker quickly turns and looks to fire, and now will tuck it and run. Out past the 50-yard line, he's helicoptered down to the 46-yard line, and Connor Stonebreaker a little slow to get up after that hit. Yeah, he's looking for Michael Osborne. Osborne ran an out route to the, the, the far side of the field. For Seal sideline, nothing there, so he immediately tucks the ball and runs, and that was a smart decision, but uh, really nice play uh, by uh, Aiden Eifert to come up and make a big stop and big third down. Third and five here for Versailles, looking to pick up that Betty's Natural Foods first down. Stonebreaker in a gun once again. Titus Garrett to the left of him now. His three wide receivers are at the top of your screen, one to the bottom. Stonebreaker turns and fires quickly. Did he catch that football? Are you kidding me? He caught it. Are you joking? <laughs> Michael Osborne slipped and fell and somehow caught this football. We'll take a look at the Holman's Insurance instant replay here. My goodness, how did Michael Osborne catch that football? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Like he's electric. I'm telling you, when he catches the ball, and the interesting thing was coverage-wise, they didn't put anybody on him. So I think it was a hot route because that's – the first thing I noticed was no one was covering him. And so immediately Stonebreaker threw the ball out there, and what a great catch by Michael Osborne. That is unreal. Is Stonebreaker going to keep it himself this time on a quarterback run? He'll just power straight ahead, and 
He stood up. Now, a whistle should have been flown about eight seconds ago. But uh, Tiger faithful. You can hear him from across the field inside the press box. They're not thrilled about the lack of a whistle either. Well, you know, it should have been blown because his his uh, forward his, right, progression. His forward progress has stopped. Yeah, it was it was done a long about time ago. About right here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's it's you know. And they still haven't blown it until about right here. So, just uh, one of those. And, and I, I I get it to a point, but now Versailles has to turn up the speed here as we approach one minute to go in this first half. Stonebreaker now pressured for the first time, and the six eight quarterback able to throw one over the middle of the field. Unable to be caught as he was looking for Osborne. Great coverage there from the Marion local defense. Yeah, I think, you know, ball was in Osborne's hand, but I think if, it looked like Nate Busher came over the top and maybe knocked it loose. But uh, Stonebreaker did a nice job of hanging in the pocket there, and uh, I was wrong. That was, uh, that was Carter Jones who was in there making a great play and knocking the ball out of Osborne's hand. What about the strength there from Connor Stonebreaker, third and nine upcoming. Darren Meyer's a two-time MAC Defensive Player of the Year, and he's hanging on in Stonebreaker, still able to get some oomph on the football as he tried to find Osborne. Third and nine and a timeout called by Marion Local before the snap, so 54 seconds to go here in this second quarter, and we'll step aside. Marion Local leading for sales driving here on WOSN. Tonight's Rent Zone brought to you by Knee Camp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on US 127, eight miles south of Salina. 39 upcoming here for Versailles, trying to get into that Knee Camp Farm Market Red Zone. And we've seen them convert some of these third downs that, you know, not many teams are successful on third down against Marion Local, but uh, they had that screen pass for a first down earlier. They've ran the football for uh, successful third down conversions. Versailles has done a, a pretty good job offensively, just haven't been able to punch one in yet. Yeah, and, and even those the third downs that they converted haven't been third and shorts. They've been you know third and long. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of play call they go here. I, I wouldn't be surprised to look for Michael Osborne here at the top of the screen. Stonebreaker in the gun with Titus Garrett to his left. Looking to the right and will fire undercut. Ball bounces off the face mask of a flyer. And the ball nearly caught by Peyton Platfoot. And it will fall to the turf. I didn't know a football could bounce that high in the air. <laughs> It just must have hit him right, and it had to hit him in the helmet because I don't think it would have bounced that high if it you know, hit somebody anywhere else. But we'll see here on the replay. They wanted to get the ball to Osborne, but they jammed him right off the line of scrimmage and uh, <laughs> looked maybe off sights the, in the, in the, right in the right in the crown of the helmet. <laughs> you get a jump ball, a bunch of baby birds <laughs> waiting for Mama Bird to drop that football back down to him. And Versailles was really lucky there wasn't a pick there, and, and now they get a fourth down opportunity. So fourth and nine. Tigers looking to convert with under a minute to go here in the second quarter. Stonebreaker in the gun will look to fire, looking, and the pass, pass interference, a penalty flag thrown at the final moment. Carter Jones made contact with the intended re receiver for Mary for Versailles. And I, I don't know, I, there was definitely contact. I don't know if it was after the ball had passed him or not. We'll see on the Holman's Insurance replay as Stonebreaker, a great look at it from our WOSN crew as he was looking for Joel Garrett. Well, penalty flag comes in. You know, they don't they don't have the rule where they talk about is the ball catchable or not. The ball was not catchable, but there was contact. So, you know, I, I, can, I can understand the, the legality of the rule. Um, I, I think in a situation like that, there's two guys playing tough defense, and uh, you could have put, maybe let it go, especially this deep in the playoffs. Silver Sales gets the Betty's Natural Foods first down. On the penalty, and that'll put him at the 24-yard line. Under a minute to go here in this first half. Tigers need a touchdown because they got the football to begin tonight's ball game. Marion Local will get it to start the second half. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen. The 6'8 senior quarterback, Connor Stonebreaker, has thrown for 13 touchdown passes this season, rushed for two more. Would like to put another touchdown on the structure outdoor Ohio by out scoreboard here. Stonebreaker looking up top, Stonebreaker pressured and sacked. A big defensive play there by the Marion local defense. As Jake Top gets his seventh sack of the season. Yeah, and he's, you know, they're progressively starting to get more pressure on Stonebreaker. I mean, it's, you know, early on, the protection was very good. He had a lot of time to throw. You know, they're they're just starting to wear on this for sales offensive line and get that pressure that they need. So the sack will push them backwards. 
Timeout called. So 33 seconds to go here in this first half, and Versailles has just, they've gone backwards here at a couple of inopportune times where, uh, you know, we, we've mentioned they've been pretty good on first down. That, that one oh, notwithstanding, but before that, they had been pretty good on first down. And they and that was a focus that they had was to get out here and get good yards on first down and not put themselves in a tough position. They're in a tough position right now. But I guess the good thing is is that uh, they got to take a shot anyway at the end zone with 35 seconds to go. They don't they don't have five minutes to just try to get a first down. They got to take a couple shots here at the end zone. So I guess if you're going to have a, a, a tough uh, time on first down, now's the time to do it. So second and 18 upcoming here when Versailles breaks the huddle, and they've tried to get the football to Michael Osborne a couple of different times. Any surprise, John, that they haven't put him at the quarterback spot yet just to get him the football directly from the center? A little bit, to be honest with you, or, or maybe just some bubble screens or something to get him the ball. I mean, he's so dynamic, and I know you've got some really good players between uh, Joel Garrett and Stonebreaker and uh, just some other players out there, Pey Peyton Platfoot and Ethan Stover, but you want to get Michael Osborne the ball, especially in this situation. Stonebreaker with Garrett to his right. Back to pass, has time. Fires across the middle of the field, it's intercepted once again. Flyers' Aiden Eifert gets the interception. That's a big defensive play. I don't know how many times we said that from Marion Local. Versailles said they needed to win the turnover battle. They just threw another interception in an inopportune time. Yeah, and this was just, a, you know, a Connor Stonebreaker just, he had his eyes on one receiver the whole time, and boy, uh, this Marion Local always steps up, and Aiden Eifert just did a great job of playing center field. I mean, he just he just read the quarterback's eyes and jumped on it when they threw it and made a great pick. So the Flyers going to line up in victory formation here, and they're just going to kneel the football and get out of the first quarter here. With a, or first half, excuse me, I beg your pardon. 14-3 lead for Marion Local. They'll take the knee and the clock will run out on the first half. So we'll step aside and come back with third quarter action. Marion Local will get the football to begin the second half. When we return, they lead 14-3 over for sales in the Division VI Regional Semifinals here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let's Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Tonight would be the perfect night to have a Structure Outdoor uh, patio cover. It's, uh, <laughs> you're trying to avoid the elements here, as you see. What a great shot there from our WOSN crew of the big white snow flurries falling here on Wapak. It is fun to be in the press box tonight. <laughs> it's, this, it's fun to watch this high school football game. Uh, the, the folks in the stands sure are troopers uh, for fighting the cold. I mean, uh, the high today was 37 degrees or whatever <laughs> it was. It was, And it wasn't going to be at... 7 o'clock at night during this football game either. So uh, uh, great showing for a pair of great high school football teams. Uh, and we talked about it to start the game where, you know, uh, both squads won state championships a season ago. I mean, Marion Local, every game that they've played so far this year has been against a playoff team. We're in week 13. They've played 13 playoff games essentially. Every team they've played has been inside the playoffs. As a squib kick kicked off by Mer by Versailles, the ball's still loose, and it's finally scooped up by Nate Busher. And he'll turn the corner. Nate Busher out to the 40-yard line, slips a tackle to the 45 before he's finally shoved out of bounds. But a great return by Nate Busher after initially having trouble picking up that football. Yeah, and he did a really smart thing of picking it up and continuing to run. And it was almost like he outran all the coverage. I mean, it, uh, it was a little confusing for the Tigers to have to, to, to cover that uh, that fumble. And... Uh, he does a nice job of getting great field position and a good, another really good special teams play for Marion Local. Which was something that they keyed on. They said they felt like they got beat in that aspect against Versailles in the first round matchup um, in this series in week six that the Flyers won 27-20. Tate has in a gun. They'll send Laos in motion and pitch it to him. Laos with some blockers in front of him, patiently waiting, and now Laos will turn on the jet engines. Drew Laos sprints past a Versailles Tiger, and he is into the end zone. A 54-yard touchdown run on the first play in the second half for the first team All-Max sophomore. Well, that's the way to come out at halftime and really make a huge statement, you know, coming out and running that play. And we've seen that play, and now it's the third time they've run that play. Uh, they just really got out there. I love what the, the scheme on this. Mason Rose, the center, pulls and makes a fantastic block. And then downfield, I love the blocking downfield. You see uh, Jake Top get down there and Kyle Unger get down there and make just a huge play. 
That's a great first play of the half for the Marion local Flyers as Bills on for the extra point. It splits the uprights and good to make it 21-3. Marion Locals goes 54 yards on one play to open a half here on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor, Minster Bank, supporting the youth in our communities. 21-3, Marion Local, the advantage. Flyers set their high score over the season last week, as, as did Versailles, which tells you how good the Midwest Athletic Conference is when you're setting the most points you've scored all season in the second round of the playoffs, where Marion Local scored 56 a 56 nothing win over West Liberty Salem last week, and Versailles beat Twin Valley South 58-7. But Flyers... 21 points on the structure outdoor Ohio by all scoreboard after the touchdown scamper there by Drew House. Yeah, just a really, what a great uh, play call and play, great blocking and what a great uh, way to start the half for the Flyers. And I think if you're Versailles in this situation, you've got to just, you got to, you know, you got to regroup, you got to reorganize here and you got to get back to doing what you were doing in the first half and trying to pick up just a first down. And, you know, coming out you want to score, but I think the most important thing right now is just getting some first downs and getting some momentum back. Laos, the 54-yard touchdown run. I'm also told that he is a fantastic hockey player, that he plays at a, a club out of Dayton and might be a better hockey player than he is football player. And he's been on display how good of a football player he is tonight. Football coach's dream. He plays hockey, too. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now Versailles with a return of their own. Michael Osborne out near the midfield stripe before he's tugged to the turf. But another great return for Versailles. Both teams having spectacular success in the return games. Yeah, the special teams is going to be a key point. And, uh, you know, the, I think one of the things that you're seeing for Versailles is that Michael uh, Osborne's touching the ball. And, and when he touches the ball, things happen. So it's going to be interesting to see this happen. I know we talked about it in the first half a little bit. Will he play some quarterback? Will he just stay at that slot receiver? But I do think they need to find ways to get him the football. Osborne lined up in the slot to the bottom of your screen as Connor Stonebreaker goes back in the shotgun. The Garrett brothers join him in the backfield. As he'll turn around and hand off to Joel Garrett. Garrett bounces it outside before he's swallowed up by a host of flyers. And I'm sure that was one of the emphasis at halftime in the uh, Marion local locker room was that on first down, we cannot give up these these big first, these the six, seven, eight yard plays. We've got to limit them to one to two yards and put them really in a tough spot and make them do things they don't want to do. Do they want to run the ball with Joel Garrett on first down? They do. Do they want to have a, a second and three or second and four to, you know, have kind of an opportunity to do whatever they want? They do. So trying to limit that was first down, those big chunks on first down. Nick Ranley had the tackle on the last play as Osborne lined up at a quarterback spot that time and is able to pick up a couple of yards on the quarterback keeper. Yeah, that was uh, that was the first time we've seen Osborne carry the ball uh, from a from a motion standpoint, and I, I like that play call, getting in the ball. He did a good job of getting some yards until he met up with Landon Arlene, and uh, Arlene did a great job of bringing uh, Michael Osborne down. So it'll be third and four here for Versailles. Trailing 21-3, so line up in the I formation once again on third and four. Joel Garrett, the deep set back, Titus Garrett in front of him at the fullback spot. Ethan Stover, the tight end at the bottom of your screen. They'll hand off to Titus Garrett. He got to the 45-yard line no further. It'll be fourth and two here for sales on the two-yard carry. Yeah, and it's decision time for Coach Jones to, you know, decide what he's going to do here on fourth down. I mean, I, I think it sounds obvious being down 21-3. Um, and, and being in this situation, it looks like he's going to go for it. But you never know. I mean, coaches, they sometimes like for a field position and, um, you know, to play it safe. But it looks like he's going he's gonna to be aggressive here and try to get this first down. Yeah, and I understand the idea of, hey, field position could be a, a big hit. Mary Logan with 15 plays, 80 yards earlier where they ran the ball 15 straight times. I, I, I think you got to think about trying to just power up the middle here or get you a first down at least is a timeout now going to be called here early in the second half. 9.28 to go here in the third quarter. It'll be fourth down at decision time when we return here on WOSN. Tonight's Marion Local Premier Sponsor is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing, and assembly needs, call OPAC. Fourth and two upcoming here for Versailles early in the second half. A timeout called, so they wanted to make sure they made the right decision here. And looks like the offense is going to stay on the field, John. Yeah, and they came out in an eye formation before they called timeout. And one of the things I noticed was uh, at the top of the field towards their sideline, they had man-to-man -man coverage with Michael Osborne against Tate Hess. Now they've reduced his split 
Uh, similar formation, but they've reduced the split. So they'll turn and pitch to Garrett. Garrett with some blockers in front of him, got nowhere near the first down marker. The Marion Little defense stands tall. I don't know if Garrett got back to the line of scrimmage. Nonetheless, the Flyers take over on downs. Well, and, and they kind of dictated what they were going to do offensively by cutting that split down and then moving the wing back to the opposite side. And they try to run Garrett to the uh, to the wide side of the field to their sideline. And, of course, that Marion local defense is stiff. They are not going to give up any uh, big yardage, especially on a fourth down like that. Now they get another opportunity here to, to even increase their score and their lead. So the ball right back at the 46-yard line where it was the last time they ran a play. It went for 54 yards as they handed off to Drew Laus. And now they'll hand off to Darren Meyer straight up the gut. And Meyer picks up the Betty's Natural Foods first down there on the 13-yard rumble. And I think this is kind of where Marion Local just starts to wear on you. You know, I mean, uh, we talked about the long drive uh, early where they, you know, they go 15 plays and they just start to wear on you and get after you. And you, you get a little bit of momentum and you go for that fourth down and you don't get it. And now here they come getting after it again. And it is tough to maintain when they just keep coming at you. First and 10 right from the 40-yard line is Tate Hess. Awaits the shotgun snap and will flip it to Laos. Laos lost that one. Ball still loose and Tate Hess corrals it at the 48-yard line. That's a huge break for Versailles because really uh, that's what's one of the first, you know, mistakes that we've seen Marion Local make tonight um, uh, with that fumble. And, uh, you know, the interesting thing here, Garrett, and we make fun of that play, but that's they're going to call that an incomplete pass. Oh, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Well, we talked about it earlier that that is – Flipped forward, he never caught the forward pass, no matter how far forward it went. It is forward, and so it's second and ten. And that is the advantage of that play. I mean, I, you know. Well, I was going to say, at this point, do, do, now that he's fumbled the foot, do you just say, hey, let's hand it off to him? Well, not now. Not you now, You just saved no. yourself. Exactly. I mean, 20, that, you saved yourself 12 yards. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, incomplete pass, and now they're in a still good position to make it first down. Fake the pitch to Adi. Hess scrambling now and will fire. Has a man deep and looking for Drew Seitz out of the backfield and couldn't connect with him. And it'll bring up third and ten on the second incompletion of this drive. Well, they're, they're, they are a little bit out of sorts, and I wouldn't be shocked to see them come right back here with um, with Darren Meyer or uh, or Adi to you know just straight running the ball because you know they've been able to move the chains by doing that. And even though it's um, third and ten. They're past the 50, and they're they're not deep in Versailles territory, but they're in good enough shape to go over four-down territory. Flyers average 6.7 yards a carry coming into tonight. They've got to be pretty close to that average here in tonight's ball game as they'll hand off to Meyer. Meyer gets a gain of eight on third and ten, and it'll bring up fourth and short. We've got an injured Tiger there on the field. As you see him. Zach Cordonier, the injured Tiger. We'll step aside. 21-3, Marion Local faced with fourth and short when we return here in the third quarter on WOSN. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Fourth and two for the Flyers out of the timeout. Or out of the injury timeout, I should say. They got to get to the 29-yard line, and the ball spotted right at the 31. Mentioned earlier, they like the pitch play here in these short yardage situations out of the eye formation. As Darren Meyer, the deep back. Meyer with a touchdown run earlier tonight. He'll get the handoff on the counter, and Darren Meyer's got the first down. Peyton Platfoot, the touchdown saving tackle is Meyer. Gets the Betty's Natural Foods first down on fourth and short. I feel like everything that Marion Local does is just so carefully crafted because they just set one thing up after another. And just a play ago, we've seen, uh, you know, the pitch play that was incomplete, but then the counter off of that. And then, like you just said, they, they typically on those third or fourth and shorts run the pitch play. Well, they just run the counter off of that play to get the first down. First and ten for the Flyers as they'll get. Versailles to jump and get an easy five yards. It'll move them right to the edge of the knee camp far market red zone. And that's when you know you, you really got a team on their heels. I mean, you, they're, now you're starting to do, you're starting to run counters. You're starting to run some different things at them that um, they're not typically used to seeing. And then you change up the snap count. Um, it, and it's starting to show the, the tiredness of the Versailles Tigers going against this Marion local offense. 
So clock continuing to tick, 7.45 to go here in this third quarter. First and five now for Marion Local after the offsides penalty by the Tigers. As Hess lines up under center, fakes the handoff, and now looking, has a man at the top of the screen looking for Adi, batted away by Peyton Platfoot. Well, Peyton Platfoot did a great job because uh, Adi was open, you know, and, and he came open uh, early. Uh, the ball was uh, just a little, took a little bit long uh, time to develop, but they've uh, ran that play several times, and now that's the play action pass off of that play. Now looking for Adi in the corner of the end zone, and I think if he put, you know, lays it out there and, and throws a bullet, he might fit it in there, but Platfoot did a nice job of reading the quarterback and, and making a play over the top. Still second and five after the false start penalty there on first down. The clock did stop. With the incomplete passes, Hess will go back to work in the tight formation. They'll hand off to Meyer. Meyer rumbling inside the 10-yard line is brought down by Ethan Stover. The touchdown saving tackle as Darren Meyer moves them further into the Camp Farm Market red zone. I feel like, too, you know, they've, they've got all these dynamic weapons. They've got Tate Hess. They've got Kyle Lottie. They've they got Drew Loss. You know, just they, they've done so many. They've got so many good players. But when they need a play, it's it's Darren Meyer. I mean, they, they, they're yeah. they're – when they need yards, when they don't need a big play, when they need to get the ball in the end zone, it's it, they call Darren Meyer's number. Same formation. Double tight end. They'll send Adi in motion. And they'll hand off to Meyer once more. Meyer inside the five-yard line, still chugging along down to the two-yard line before he is brought to the turf. Dominic Bargy and Mitchell Bay combined for the tackle. Take a look at the Holman's Insurance replay here. You'll see the push up front from the Marion local offensive line. Yeah, they're, they're really starting to gain that advantage. And, you know, I know Coach Goodwin talked about, you know, winning the line of scrimmage, but they're they're really starting to not only win it, but dominate it. So the ball right at the three-yard line, first and goal, second and goal here for the Flyers. They'll hand off to Meyer. Meyer upended just shy of the goal line, right at the one-yard line as Platfoot Makes the stop once more for Versailles. Well, same play they ran two plays ago, and uh, it was it's uh, the counter off of that that motion, and uh, you know they had a great you know opportunity, but uh, Platfoot did a, just a really nice job of making a one-on-one -on -one tackle with Darren Meyer, and that doesn't happen very often. Yeah, it looks like Meyer's going to come out of the ball game here, is uh, favoring that left arm. That's a big contributor for the Flyers. Heading off the field, not only on offense, but the two-time Midwest Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year subbing out. As Flyers will call a timeout. Third and goal upcoming here for Marion Local. When we return, more third quarter action coming up here on WOSN. First down tonight brought to you by Betty's Natural Foods. They're your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. Nice football game being played inside of a snow globe. <laughs> As Hess goes under center, he'll pitch to Kyle Audi, and Kyle Audi's in from one yard out to extend the lead for Marion Local. Audi's first touchdown run tonight. Drew Loss with a touchdown run. Darren Meyer with a touchdown run. Kyle Audi gets his second of the evening after his 20-yard scamper in the first quarter. Makes it 27-3. Yeah, Kyle Adi, you know, I think a year ago he was, you know, scoring a, you know, a lot of those touchdowns before the injury. And, uh, you know, he's got uh, 13 touchdowns now in the season, uh, rushing touchdowns, that is, this year. And, uh, you know, he's just he's just a dynamic back as well. It's nice that when you're, you know, your your senior Darren Meyer goes out for a couple of plays that bring in a guy like Adi and call on his call his number. Versailles jumps off sides before this kick is up by Bills. Assume Marion Local will keep the field goal unit on the field. Don't really gain anything by going for two here. So they will just move the ball up a yard and a half. As Bills will attempt the field goal, or extra point, I should say, once more. High snap. Kick is up and good. It's 28-3 Flyers. Flyers have won 28 straight, looking to make it 29. You're on WOSN. Marion Local spent an awful lot of time tonight in the Ecamp Far Market Red Zone, including a couple of plays there as Kyle Adi gets his second touchdown run of the night. 
one from 20 yards out, one from one yard out to make it 28-3 for the Flyers. And you can see that it really hasn't affected the game as much, but the, the little spits of snow that we've seen earlier turning into uh, pretty big chunks of, uh, of uh, snow coming down. and. It's fun. It's November, and we're getting snow already, Garrett. <laughs> Not exactly an onside kick there, but a little pooch to Joel Garrett corralled. So Versailles will take over with relatively good starting field position. Now, I assume that was just a, hey, we don't want Michael Osborne to have the football. <laughs> and you know what? Hey, that's a really good decision at this point. I mean, you know, it, it, if they – if if – if Marion Local can keep the ball out of Michael Osborne's hands, then they'll have a much better opportunity here of, of kind of shutting Versailles down and, and st st stymieing their offense uh, altogether. Connor Stonebreaker under center. Joel Garrett, the deep back in the I formation. James Schmidtmeyer lined up as fullback. With five and a half to go here in this third quarter. Send a man in motion. Hand off to Joel Garrett. Out to the 39-yard line, a gain of six there on first down for the max leading rusher. Yeah, and, and I, I know when you're in this situation, you're down, you know, this much to to this team. You know, there's there's several things you can do. You can panic and start doing some things that you don't normally do, or you can just kind of regroup and, and do some things that your team is comfortable with. High formation once again. Michael Osborne, the wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. Under five minutes to go here in this third quarter for Sales trying to put something together. A turning pitch to Garrett. Surveys the defense for just a moment. Spun down just shy of that Betty's Natural Foods first down marker. It's going to be third and about as short as you can get. Joel Garrett's had a nice night. I mean, he, he's really run the ball effectively. I mean, and he's uh, he's done a nice job of staying north and south, breaking tackles, falling forward. He's an excellent back. Obviously, he's had a great season, and uh, but he's just had a really solid night tonight. Third and one, Stonebreaker will just dive forward and picks up the Betty's Natural Foods first down and more, getting close to that midfield stripe after just needing to get to the 43. Picks up several more yards after that on the second effort. Yeah, and, you know, you see that happen sometimes with those QB sneaks. Sometimes they, if they can just kind of break through that first level and keep their feet moving, and you see them driving there and picking up some nice yardage. It's a good play there for the Tigers. Out to the 49-yard line as they approach Marion local territory. Once again, Versailles has done some damage offensively. They just had penalties and turnovers at really inopportune times. They have. They, they've, uh, they've, they've done a nice job. Play calling's been really solid. They've moved the ball, but the turnovers have been, you know, the biggest thing that's, at, that's bit them. Stonebreaker back to pass, has time. Will look deep for Osborne, has to adjust to the ball and can't bring down that football. Tate Hess on the coverage for Marion Local. Yeah, Tate Hess, he's just so athletic. That's the thing. He did a great job of, uh, of uh, staying on Michael Osborne. But if you notice here, you'll see the replay that, you know, they've got about four guys around him as well. They, they know where he's at. They're going to keep guys on him. They're not going to let him get wide open at this point. Get a great look at it on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard there. We'll bring up second and 10 after the incompletion. 3.43 to go, and when you look at offensively, Versailles put the first points of the season on Marion Local's defense in the first quarter, and then missed a field goal, have thrown two interceptions deep inside Marion Local territory. Um, they've had their opportunities here in this ball game. Yeah, they've, they've, they've really had a great game plan coming into this, and they've played well. They've played they've, they've Played toe to toe with Marion Local, but uh, just you know some crucial mistakes of really what's cost them. Timeout called by the Tigers. We got a break in the action. We got a break on WOSN. Tonight's Marion Local premier sponsor is OPAC and Osgood for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. Flyers with a 28-3 advantage over for sales. Flyers, winners of 28 straight games, the state's longest streak. Won the 2021 state championship with a perfect 16-0 record and won their first 12 this year. Been well on their way to making that 29 with a 28-3 lead over Versailles here in the third quarter. Stonebreaker will be in a shotgun. Back to pass, looking left, throws. It's caught by A.J. Griesdard, just shy of the first down marker. 
and that we've seen Versailles have some success with just those quick quick hitting out routes. Yeah, and you know, they've kind of went away from it a little bit, but but early in the game they were doing that quite a bit, and, and you know, that, that shows a lot of uh, arm strength by Connor Stonebreaker to throw those out routes, and a really nice job by Griesdorn to catch it, get his body turned up field and to get those positive yards, and um, it's nice to see them kind of go back to that, because you're right, they've had some success with that. And their Versailles going into the wind, what wind there is, and probably a 10 mile an hour wind or so depending on the gust as Joel Garrett gets the carry. He's got to Betty's, food natural, Betty's Natural Foods first down. Yeah, another first down. I mean, it'd be interesting to see the statistics at the end of the game, you know. Um, I feel like really, as far as ball control, Versailles is probably equal. I mean, they've, they've held the ball, they've gotten yeah. first downs. The thing that they haven't been able to do is score. I mean, they just, they can't put the ball in the end zone. and. That's, you know, a credit to Marion Local's defense, but they've just done a great job of moving the sticks tonight. First and 10 at the 39-yard line here for the Tigers. Trying to get the Flyers to jump off sides and did. Got that nose guard just to jump over. Well, and Marion Local's wanting to be aggressive. I mean, they, they really seem to tighten up, especially on this side of the 50. They tighten their defense up. You'll notice them start to bring more pressure and they'll start to play some games with those uh, defensive linemen. And um, it, it's a good time for Versailles to change up their snap count and to try to really challenge them so that they're not just teeing off. Yeah, they play those three down linemen. They bring a linebacker or two every play. It's just figuring out, all right, which ones are coming and which ones aren't. Joel Garrett takes the pitch out to the 30-yard line, brought to the turf by the Flyers. Carter Jones, I believe, with the stop for Marion Local. Yeah, and, and that time both they both they brought both inside linebackers that time, and you can see the pursuit inside, uh, you know, uh, from linebacker Jake Top coming, uh, actually playing from the defensive end position, coming down trying to make that play. So it'll be second and short here. Two yards needed to get a Betty's Natural Foods first down. The Stonebreaker goes under center, and will give to Schmidtmeyer this time. Schmidtmeyer powers over the 30-yard line. And that will move the chains for another Betty's Natural Foods first down. Well, Versailles, they like we like we said just a little bit ago, they have they've went toe to toe. I mean, they are they're not getting pushed around. They they come at Marion Local. There's there's aggressiveness. It just kind of shows you know uh, why they were able to be state champs last year and how uh, how uh, disciplined and productive they've been out here on the field. And I know the score doesn't look that way, but they've really they played a solid game tonight. Approaching two minutes to go here in the third quarter as Stonebreaker will go back under center. As Garrett, the deep back once more. He'll take the handoff up the middle of the field. Met by the Flyers defense as Nate Busher in on the tackle for Marion Local as well as Carter Jones. And again, we see him on first down be pretty productive. And I'm sure, you know, when Coach Goodwin takes a look at the film tomorrow with the team or Monday or whenever they'll do it because it's a Saturday night game, that that'll be something that he'll be upset about because I feel like Versailles has done a really good job on first down getting those, those big gains. Second and two. Stonebreaker pressured. Ball's loose. Bargy bounces on it. But Ranley... And Arling in on the sack there for Versailles. And little Tigers lucky to retain possession after the fumble. And maybe Coach Goodwin will be upset about what they've done, you know, on first downs, but he will be happy with the way that they, <laughs> their defense had just responded, especially, you know, I wouldn't say in the red zone, but when, when it's time to, to tighten up, they, they seem to just really uh, get aggressive and tighten up here. Flyers won't get the shutout tonight, but they're looking to become, at some point this season, the fifth school in state history to have ten shutouts in one season. A stonebreaker will scamper down just shy of the 20-yard line. So he's going to be still about two yards shy as stonebreaker still out, still down on the field. So the senior quarterback injured and will step aside come back with more third quarter action after the injury timeout here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Connor Stonebreaker, the injured Tiger, is able to slowly meander his way to the Tiger bench under his own power. Michael Osborne will come in at quarterback with Titus Garrett to his left. 
Tigers trailing by a 28-3 score. I need a first down here on fourth and four. Well, the good news is Michael Osborne is in a quarterback, but the bad news is Connor Stonebreaker typically plays receiver when he does go in a quarterback. True. Osborne rolling to the left, pressured by Eifert, has to reverse field, can't, and that'll be another turnover on downs as Nick Ranley makes the stop in the sack for Marion Local. Yeah, and, and, and they did a, a nice job of uh, containing, making him turn back, and really, Eden Eifert did a good job as well of uh, really wrapping him up and, and, and stopping him and then, uh, you know, making that big play for Marion Local. So the Flyers will take over at their own 22-yard line. Yeah, it's Kyle Lotti will be the last flyer in the four or in the huddle as Adi will line up as the deep back in the I formation with 49 seconds to go he'll take the sweep Adi with room to run Adi <laughs> upended Stouffer the tackle for Versailles but another nice run there by Kyle Adi and it's a gain of seven on first down and you, when you watch Darren Meyer run, he runs with a little bit more power. But when Adi, Kyle Adi gets the ball, you can see a little bit more slash and a little bit more elusiveness. And, uh, you know, he's, he's really bounced back from that knee injury from a year ago. And you can see him really starting to get his feet underneath him. And, you know, I think as, as they continue this playoff run, you're going to see him kind of really pop here in the next few weeks. See Busher, the man in motion. So he'll turn and pitch to Laws. Laws, a penalty flag thrown down as he's spun to the turf by Lyons. First team of all Midwest Athletic Conference defensive lineman Jared Lyons on the tackle for loss, and we got a penalty flag down. Just yeah, it see looks, the replay here. Looks like they're going to get a holding call, but uh, interesting that the official on the, the back side of the uh, back judge there threw that flag. You know, typically you have a, an official that is watching linemen, but he threw that from uh, Versailles' side of the ball. So. so it's a holding call. So the penalty declined, and that will do it for the third quarter of play. So we'll step aside, come back with fourth quarter action. A Marion local in control over Versailles 28 3. Fourth quarter action upcoming here on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Minster Bank, supporting youth in our communities. Fourth quarter about to get underway. Flyers lead 28-3 over Versailles on the Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt scoreboard. Marion Local with the football, faced with third down and relatively long here. We've seen them be more than willing to keep the football on the ground here in these situations. Yeah, and typically they turn to Darren Meyer, and he's off the field right now. He, Kind of came off, uh, you know, with an injury, and I think he's okay. But they're gonna they're gonna keep him out right now, and looks like they're gonna come out with a spread formation here. Drew Laws in the backfield with Tate Hess, and Laws for the play action fake, and they'll find a receiver up the seam as Marion Local hits the tight end. Connor Bruns had three receptions all season coming into tonight. He gets that first down catch to move the Betty's Natural Foods first down. Connor Bruns is six foot three, two hundred and twenty-five pounds. Uh, That's an offensive lineman wearing number thirty-three. Is what <laughs> I was it is. Gonna say. And he's catching the football. <laughs> and when he caught the ball, I thought, oh boy, who's gonna who's gonna hit him? Because he's a load. <laughs> yeah, that's a bigger fellow rumbling up the seam there, but he got the first down and moves those chains. Flyers go back under center. They'll turn and pitch, Adi, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Dominic Bargy, another big stop there from his defensive line spot. Dominic Bargy's had a good game. He's been aggressive, and he's been able to, to uh, infiltrate that, uh, that really stingy uh, Marion local def or offensive line, and he's done a great job and really played a, a real well-fought game. Loss of three there on first down. will bring up second and 13 here for the Flyers. Yeah, Simon Partington will line up. As the fullback. Now Ethan Stover showing blitz. They'll hand off to Partington. Partington with some room to rumble out past the midfield stripe, and he's got a 15-yard carry to move the Betty's Natural Foods first down. 
Simon Partington hasn't had the carries that uh, Darren Meyer and Kyle Ollie's had, but uh, looked impressive there on the trap. He does a nice job of uh, switching up his footwork, and then what he really did a nice job was bending that trap and running behind his down blocks up front. And picks up a really good first down and probably a, a fun pickup for him. First carry of the night, goes for 15 yards and a Betty's Natural Foods first down, and he's going to be in the backfield once again. Bartington lined up to the right of Hess in a gun. As Kyle Adi, the man in motion. Adi takes the pitch. Adi got some blockers in front of him. Out down to the 24-yard line. Tackle made by Braden Henry over Sales. And they're just going to keep coming at him, Garrett. They're just going to – I mean, this is – this is like clockwork. You know, they're going to run the same plays. They're going to just get after it. You know, we, we've seen one pass, which is a tight end pot pass. But Coach Goodwin's going to milk this clock, and he's just going to keep pounding the football. Yeah, I think you're, you're basically going, hey, we've got, you know, like six base run plays we're going to run here, and uh, we're not going to put anything on film for our opponent to yep. uh, know that we run or anything like that. If we can run the clock and run the football, we're going to do it. As laws, the man in motion, and they'll hand off to Adi once again. Adi met in the backfield. As it's a good it's a good time now. You, you start to see some different guys coming in, and you do want to work those other guys in at some point. You know, if you, if you have an injury or you have something happen, you, you want to have the other guys ready to go. But you always run that like that thing where you're going to have a game soon where you're going to have to play all four quarters. And how many times has that right. happened for the Marion local starters? Not very much. Not many. And Not many. They got to be in shape to do that. Parker Hess, the ball carry that time is Levi Bargy. The tackle, he'll turn and pitch to Kyle Adi this time. Adi patiently meandering, he lost the football. A Marion local pounced on the football as Kyle Adi is now injured. Kyle Adi down on the football field. He fumbled the football and now we see why. So a stoppage on the field for Kyle Adi. And we'll step aside. 856 to go in the fourth quarter here on WOSN. Simon Partington the carry on first down. Gain of about five there for the fullback. So he's got 20 carries on two or 20, 20 yards on two carries. If he had 20 <laughs> carries and two yards, he's probably not getting the ball again, but he's got 20 yards on two carries, I should say. And he probably will be, you know, he'll, he'll be bragging about that. Oh, Guys, no. you can see the, the the yards per carry tonight. Feeling pretty good about it, Coach. I don't know if you <laughs> saw, but 10, 10 yards per carry. I should be getting the ball more. <laughs> I guess the, I'm, I'm guessing those conversations don't happen too often at Marion Local about, Coach, I should be getting the ball, ball more, which might be why they've won 12 state championships. As laws the ball carry are out to the 20-yard line, and that puts Marion Local inside the knee camp farm market red zone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's one response from the Marion local players that, yes, coach, is, is basically what their response is. Yeah, I imagine when you can wear state championship rings on your big toes because uh, <laughs> you are out of fingers. Probably not a lot of second guessing going on around there. It's third and three upcoming here for the Flyers. I still think, you know, and, and we hope that uh, Kyle Lottie's okay and we hope Darren Meyer's okay and – we kind of see him down there on the sidelines kind of stretching out, which is a good sign. But it's also a really good time to get some of these other guys some yeah. carries and, and get some other faces in the game. Pass under center. Oh, we get a penalty flag before the snap. And we get a false start called against Marion Local. Well, and that's... You know, and that's just kind of the growing pain to bringing guys, new guys in the game. And not that it was anybody new, but, you know, you bring new faces in, guys that typically don't practice with the first team or, you know, a sub here or there. And there are, there's times that there's going to be some confusion. And you're right. You get some of these guys in that maybe don't have a, a super big amount of varsity experience where you can pretend that, the, you know, the JV offense is similar to the varsity offense. I'm, I'm certain there are things in the varsity offense that probably haven't been thought about in a JV offense or, and vice versa is the hand of law, handoff to laws gets them right back to the 20-yard line in the knee camp far market red zone. Well, and I think if you – talk to Coach Goodwin, one of the things he says, and, you know, you'll hear Coach Otten say it at Coldwater as well, one of the advantages that, that Marion Local and these, these MAC programs have is that they practice, you know, 16 weeks out of the season. Right. And they get that extra practice time. And that's not that's not necessarily for the older guys. That's for the younger guys. They're getting almost twice the amount of practice time as other teams. And this is really allows them to, 
to develop as players. So fourth and three here for Marion Local. They'll send sights in motion and pitch to Laws out of the backfield. Laws with some blockers in front of him. Drew Laws down to the 11-yard line. He's got the Betty's Natural Foods first down. Yeah, Drew Laws is going to be a name you're going to hear a lot about. We've seen some some uh, glimpses of uh, really, uh, you know, the, the touchdown that he had earlier um, was just, you know, kind of dynamic. And you're going to see him, I think, only as a sophomore, six foot, 180 pound sophomore. He's going to, he's got a bright future ahead of him. Six minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. Flyers looking to punch one in. As Hess goes back under center, a touchdown would turn the running clock on here in this fourth quarter. There's Hess. Hands off to Partington. Partington, just a gain of three that time. That's going to bring down the yards per carry there for Simon Partington. Might torpedo his argument about getting the football more. He was at <laughs> 10 yards. Now, now it's going to be down to what, seven and a half? Whew, I don't know. <laughs> they might have to. They might have to have a coach's meeting about yeah. how his uh, yards have decreased over yeah. time. He gave the guy the ball three times, and he went from. 15 yards to five yards to two yards on each carry. Well, and I just feel like this drive versus Sales has been, you know, their defense has been on the field for about three years. I mean, this has just been a long drive. This drive started with 49 seconds to go in the third quarter, the 13th play of the drive upcoming. Laws the carry, and there will be a 14th play of the drive as he did not get into the end zone. And, you know, Garrett, in today's world of college football spread offenses and tempo and all this kind of stuff, you know, there's something to be said about just running the ball and taking time off the clock. I mean, Marion Local has kind of an old-school philosophy. Now they, they mix it up and do some new things with it, but that's why they're so effective. I mean, they just they just gear, grind you down to the point where you're just ready to be done. Not only is it physically demoralizing, it's mentally demoralizing. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, they've converted several third downs, a couple of fourth downs on this drive where you think, all right, we're going to get a stop here. It's third and goal from the three-yard line, and Laws is going to get his second touchdown carry of the night. Drew Laws punches one in from three yards out to make it 34-3 Flyers. And they're a machine. I mean, they are an absolute machine, and uh, they just keep coming at you, keep pounding the ball. One guy goes down, another guy comes in. Drew Laws has had a really nice night. He's uh, he's shown that he can carry the football and be a, a real impact player. So 34-3 the score. And we'll turn the running clock on once Marion Local goes to kick off. As Bills on to kick the extra point. And Carson Bills puts it through the uprights for the fifth time tonight to make it 35-3. Flyers in control here on WOSN. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Flyers with a 35-3 advantage at the Mercy Health Wapak Ford Snow Globe. Let's get a great look at the snow falling down here. You know, a few weeks ago, we covered the uh, Fort Recovery Minster game, and that was a matchup of a, of a game in, in the first round of the playoffs that was a, a repeat. And if you remember, Garrett, yeah. the score is very similar. Uh, the second time around, same here. I mean, it was a 27-7 game earlier in the season, and, uh, you know, they have 35-3. to It's just kind of sometimes amazing to see how, uh, even though teams scheme things up different, they practice different, they have different game plans, the outcome is, is pretty similar to yeah. what it was the first time. And, and, and you know, and that's with both teams, you know, have gotten better. Both teams yep. have uh, certainly improved since that week six matchup. And, uh, and and that's the unfortunate thing about both sides being in the same division in the same region, that Marion Local was in Division Seven. Marion Local was if Marion Local was in Division Three, they got a great shot to win yeah. the state championship. We Absolutely. saw we saw a state championship caliber team last night in Hamilton Baton. Uh, that you know, I don't know that they would have a, a great night against Marion Local either. But uh, you see Peyton Platfoot return the kickoff there, and uh, was on a knee when he went to return it. So uh, the ball spotted at the 19-yard line. So not ideal starting position for for sales, but. Both teams have gotten better, and it's just sort of yep. indicative of, of where we, each one of them is. And there's there's nothing to hang like 
Marion Locals beat a lot of teams pretty good right. this year. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, we, we covered Walpock last night, and we're here at Walpock tonight. But, you know, they lost their first game against Marion Local, and they've lost against Hamilton Baden. That was it. I mean, that's the level that they're on. Yep. And these are big uh, school teams that uh, they're defeating and, you know, not just beating them, but beating them soundly. So Connor Stonebreaker back in a football game. Glad to see that. As he'll go under center. Joel Garrett, the junior running back, the deep set in the I formation. And he'll power ahead. Just shy of the 25-yard line. So a gain of about five there for Garrett. And it's a tough spot to be in, you know, for Versailles. You know, they've been on offense has been on the sidelines for quite a while. You're down big, you know, running clock. You don't you don't gain anything by coming out trying to throw the ball deep or anything. You just gotta you gotta bear down and try to you know uh, do some things that have been uh, caused you some success most of the season. But really, a hats off to these guys for you know really. I, I thought they've had they played a really tough game tonight. Michael Osborne now in at quarterback as they'll hand off to Joel Garrett and Garrett rumbles just a little bit for the Betty's Natural Foods first down to the 34 yard line. And at this point, John, I've always I've always been a proponent, and it's just me being an idiot up here in a press box, but, like, <laughs> you've practiced a couple of trick plays, right? You're losing 35-3. to three, It's the final game. Let's run a double reverse pass. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's do a flea flicker or whatever. You got nothing to lose. You practice it. You might as well do it here. You're not gonna not gonna cost you anything. No, but I think that the fear always is 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 that we, are we gonna look stupid? And you know, as as fans, you know, I think it, you, you walk away and you look good. I mean, Versailles to me, they they fought a hard fought game. Yeah. But you know, you run a trick play right now and throw a pick six or something. You know, people aren't gonna be too happy about it. So I don't know. There's two ways of thinking about that. I, I get what you're saying. You know. Uh, try something different. Try something fancy and hey, try yeah, to mix it up. Last game of the year, Brent. Yep. Can't hold anything back <laughs> that's now. That's right. That's right. Every time we get that two times in a weekend. That's right. There you go. <laughs> I'm a bad influence on you, Garrett. No, no. But uh, but it, but I get it. Yeah, you know, you, you might want to try something here. And, but at the same time, I, I get just, you know, being conservative and, and just sticking with what's worked this year. Tigers will hand off to Blake Henry, a sophomore running back. I, we were talking last night on the air, you know, I used to have coaches who would, you know, assistant coaches that would say, you know, coach, let's not take a knee, let's go for it, you know, the game's over. And as a coach, sometimes you just, you do just want to get the game over. I mean, right. there's no, a situation yeah. like, you know, we, we've we taken a pounding, so why not just, you know, get out of here and get on the bus? It's cold. It's snowing. Stonebreaker's just going to uncork one, looking for Michael Osborne, nearly caught. And stand a nice defense, a nice defense there well uh Versailles must have like a like a, a mole up here because they must have heard the Garrett C. Hey, Wright man, strategy I've let's let's put Connor Stonebreaker back in let's throw a deep ball like Connor, okay, so Connor Stonebreaker has had a great high school football career right yes he's gonna get to play maybe now one more play might as well let him drop back and throw <laughs> it as far as he can and see what happens that's that's all I'm saying on fourth and one they'll hand it off right up the gut to Titus Garrett a senior running back who uh, might be the final carry of his career. I just think, you know, we, we spent all these time, okay, we're going to practice this reverse. We're going to practice this pass. What do you got to lose? Let's That's throw right. it in there. Uh, but I understand, you know, hey, you know, you're not trying to <laughs> – I'm sure that, you know, you're not trying to poke the bear over on the Marion local sideline either of scoring a touchdown from 80 yards out. <laughs> I get it. But counter Stonebreaker back to pass. Got a strong arm. Let him uncork one. They heard you, man. Going Talk deep. <laughs> looking for Osborne. Osborne, by the way, just a junior. He'll come back, and that'll do it. Marion Local wins 35-3, a commanding regional semifinal victory over the reigning Division V state champion Versailles Tigers. We'll step aside, come back, and put a bow on this one. Flyers moving on, a 35-3 win over Versailles here on WOSN. Marion Local victorious tonight, 35-3. Time to name our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page that you can see. And we've come to a consensus, John Zerby, that um, somebody stood out above the rest for our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. Yeah, Darren Meyer, you know, not only being uh, just a great defensive player, but uh, just offensively, every time they needed an answer, it was Darren Meyer needed a first down, needed a big play. 
And, uh, he, you know, he kind of went out with an injury uh, towards the end of the game. We're hoping he'll be okay and back out there next week. But uh, fantastic player. Great job, Darren Meyer. So Darren Meyer, our Stolle Hustle Award winner tonight. Marion Local moving on with a 35-3 win over the Versailles Tigers. Tigers end their season at 9-4. And, four, four. and Marion Local wins their 29th straight contest. 35-3 to three for our phenomenal WOSN crew. Wayne Getz, Derek Henry, Cassidy, Driscoll, Seth Hegemeyer, and Clay Jordan, and John Zerby up here in a booth. I'm Garrett Seawright. We'll catch you next time right here on WOSN. <laughs>